Hey gang, Scott here. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about three things that happen to people in On One Photo Raw, often enough that I'll classify them as common mistakes. So just you know, errors, not understanding how the tool works, clicking the wrong thing and not realizing what happened, that kind of stuff. I've gotten these questions a few times repeatedly, like, you know, kind of like some of these happen once a week, some of these happen, you know, once every 10 days, enough that I want to put together a video. There's a trend here, so let's talk about these three things. Common mistake number one, changing the rating or the metadata for the wrong photo. And this happens when you're in browse. So you're in browse and I am looking at a search of four star photos and higher through all of my catalog folders. And you're skimming around and looking at things, you go, you know, that one, uh, maybe, you know what, maybe this isn't a four star photo. Let me lower it. And you click on this and stuff just changed. What the heck just happened? I clicked the wrong photo. The badges for On One Photo Raw for a photo are at the top. They're above the photo. They're not beneath. And there are a lot of other tools that have things beneath. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to see some other photos show up. I had clicked on this one. This is the one I was saying, oh, maybe this isn't a four star photo. When I select it, look at the border. And the rating for that photo is at the top. So badges for your rating, your color, your like or reject, those are at the top. If I do not want this to be in my four stars anymore, that's where I need to click it. It disappears and the behavior is how I expected it to be in the first place. So mistake number one, pay attention to the badges you're clicking on to select, deselect, raise lower photos from searches or from other you know, smart collections like that. It is the badges on the top of the photo. That's where they live in On One Photo Raw. Mistake number two is not understanding the difference between develop and local adjustments. In short, develop is global. Local adjustments are targeted to specific areas of your photo. And this is the scenario that I get often. If someone's working with a photo like this one here, we go in, maybe do our, our AI auto, we do our automatic settings. We get the photo kind of liking how we want to see it, but oh gosh, my sky is still kind of washed out. Uh, let me start with you know lowering exposure or I start you know really pushing highlights down. Uh, maybe I say I want to take haze, but I'm affecting everything in the photo. And folks either say, well, I can't get to where I want to be, or they immediately jump to layers. They'll pop up into layers and say, okay, well, let me add another layer and try to work on this. We don't need to do that. These controls, exposure, contrast, highlights, midtones, shadows, white, black, all those things there, we have those same exact controls in the local area. This is tone and color, right? It's that same panel, tone, color. We have all of that here. We have that with masks. Develop, can't apply masks, local adjustments, we can, and that's actually how they work. Notice by default, there's no change, an entire black mask. And so if I want to lower the exposure of my sky, let's see you know, maybe, stage my sliders here that and I noticed that haze sliders seem to do a nice job there let me lower that down pretty healthy I'll grab my masking bug drop it here rotate it around so I'm affecting the sky and I have my masking tools and now as I adjust these sliders I'm just affecting my sky but I'm doing my tonal refinements so do your global setting of tone. In this case, I'd probably remove what I did with haze because it was doing too much to the foreground and highlights were a little too far backed off. Matter of fact, AI auto. And then if I need to refine things with my tone, I do that in local adjustments. And here is where I can take care of that mask I have on the sky to bring that back into play there. So mistake number two, the difference between develop and local. Both do tonal adjustments. Develop is global for your entire photo. There is no masking possible. Locals is where you can use mask and do targeted tonal adjustments to specific areas of your scene. Mistake number three is clicking on the wrong masking icon in effects. And what happens here 
is you start masking away all of your effects, not just the one that you're interested in. Let me give you a scenario here. This is kind of how it works. You're working on a photo, you've added a bunch of different filters to the stack, and you want to add something else. So I'll add in a glow for this one and you know dial in you know something that's that's pretty soft. Maybe I'll dial back the strength on that. Okay, I kind of like that, but um, I don't like what's going on with the sky. It's a little bit too bright. So what happens is this is the masking icon for the glow filter. But people will accidentally click on this masking icon and then start doing things like painting out and starting to remove things. And you just start going, what is happening here? I'm suddenly seeing a very strange tinting or uh, some other you know, splotchiness, way too much contrast, things are underexposed, all sorts of stuff going on, which is unexplainable at first. What's happening? Let's go ahead and do, uh, just let me just paint this whole thing here, just this big circle here. What's happening is I am applying a mask to the entire filter stack. So this masking icon that hides right next to the add filter button, this mask applies to the entire stack. So for every single filter that I have added here, I'm removing it from this spot that I just painted. And what I meant to do was just back it off and paint away that glow, but I clicked on the wrong masking icon. Let me reset that. How can you tell the difference? Uh, well, obviously that I'm pointing it out, you probably go, oh yeah, of course, I see it now. It's a different icon. But when you open up the global mask, this is the mask for all the filters, you have limited options. You can reset it, copy it, invert it, and paste it. I don't have the other sliders. If I open up the mask for, say, the glow, I've got density, feather, and color ranges, and all sorts of different controls for the mask. So that's a key indicator that you've clicked on the wrong masking icon. You click on that filter one, you don't see all those sliders. Okay, I'm in the wrong space. I don't want to do that. In my case, I wanted to back off the glow, so I've opened up my glow mask, and now I could get my masking brush. I have my opacity, and then I can paint out some of that glow that was being a little bit too aggressively added to that spot that I cared about. And I'm only affecting the glow filter. So that's mistake number three, clicking on the wrong mask icon and removing all of your effects filters with a mask. That has its place, but more often than not, I see people mistakenly click that particular masking area. So pay attention to those clicks. There's a you know, small differences in the interface can make a big difference to your photo. So those are the three. The first one, clicking on the wrong set of badges for a photo to raise or lower its rating or change its color label. The badges are on top. They're above the photo thumbnail. Mistake number two, the difference between develop and local. You can do tonal adjustments locally. You don't have to dive into layers and do sorts of blending. Go to those local adjustments. You have all those tonal controls and you have masks. And mistake number three is clicking on the wrong masking icon in effects. You don't want to be removing all of your filter stack. Pay attention to where you click. And that especially happens when you're working on that top filter in the filter stack. Hope you found this useful. Got questions below? Go ahead and ask. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.